Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It and let me just start by saying Happy New Year and thank you so much for the amazing response to this year's project. I hope 2024 has started well for you. It definitely has for me. You might be able to hear though, it's also started with a cold, but other than that, it's been absolutely great. So I do apologise for my croaky, nasally voice. I hope I hope you'll tolerate it for the sake of the video. I have been totally blown away by the response to this year's project. It has been my best performing video of all time, which you can't quite believe because there was no actual sewing in it. <laughs> does make you wonder. And we've got around currently about 40 members in our Facebook group. And if you don't know about that, I will put a link to it in the description below so that you can go and sign up if you want to post pictures of your work it'd be really great to see as many pieces of sewing as we possibly can and so that we can support each other and just be a really positive community to encourage one another as we move through the year. Now just before the new year I posted a community post on my channel and I put up a bunch of colour schemes and asked you to say which one you thought most said January and C, which is this one here, was the overwhelming winner and so all I've done so far is gather some items so I've gone through my fabric stash and I've got a bunch of fabrics and I've got different types of fabrics here and so I've just gathered together all the stuff that I've got that is kind of in that colour scheme and I've just sectioned it away so that I've got it handy so that's your first job is to go and have a look around and gather together what you've got and if you want to stitch along with me today you might want to pause the video and go and have a route about and get your own little box of resources together and I'm actually going to put these to one side in a minute because what I felt I was lacking was a fabric that matched this dark blue and I wanted to try some new things this year and we could do a really simple um, background of like bits of fabric and patched fabric that's overlaid but I wanted to try something a little bit different so one of my intentions for 2024 is to just experiment more to play more maybe take some risks and use the stuff that I've got because sometimes I keep things because I don't want to cut into them and so I don't want to do that anymore so what I've got I'm just going to clear this away so I'm going to pause the video while I clear some space and gather together my bits Ta da as if by magic <laughs> we've got a different setup so um what i've got here is some watercolor paints now if you don't have watercolor paints you could do this with poster paints you could do this with any paints you like you could do it with some ink if you've got a water-based ink pen like a fountain pen you could use acrylics you could use your kids poster paints you could use felt pens if you want to um, alcohol markers I think people that craft tend to have lots of bits and pieces but also people that have children and grandchildren tend to have quite a lot of bits and pieces and if you haven't got any of this stuff then don't worry about it you could use some tea if you wanted to you could um, tea, tea stain something or use fruit teas or if you want some blues you can use red cabbage or I think uh, red onion um, gives some interesting pinks and pinkish browns so there are loads of things that you can play around with to stain your fabric and I've got a bit of fabric here it's all crumpled it's an old bed sheet that wore through and has now got a big hole in the middle of it and but the, the bits around the outside that took around the side of the mattress don't wear in the same way so this is really good quality fabric and it seems such a shame to waste it so I've just ripped a bit off and this is just a baking tray out of my cupboard and I've 
covered it in foil because I don't really want watercolour paint all over it. So I've got some watercolours, I've got my water, I've got a little spritzer bottle here and I have already done this but I've been faffing about for a while so I'm just going to spritz my paint because that gets them nice and juicy. And I have never done this before, but I thought it might be fun to do a bit of painting of our fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the bottle. I'm going to wet the fabric a bit to help the paint spread. And I thought we could do a bit of paint your own fabric. So what I want are some dark blues and I've got an indigo here somewhere I just can't remember which paint it is it's not that one here we go this is my indigo so I'm gonna get my brush in and I want some indigo pigment here we go let's see what happens and uh, I'm just gonna be a bit random with this so I thought we could just blob some paint around. And I'm going to try not to fuss. I'm already feeling like I'm on the verge of a panic attack. <laughs> I'm going to try not to fuss about it. Because this is not... We're not trying to be perfect. We're just mark making. So let's do exactly that i talked about mark making in that introductory video i quite like that so i've got a big square brush here and let's do some actual mark making so i've put some smears on but let's do some other kinds of marks as well so i want some sections of my fabric that's are maybe some layers and are quite blurry like this but I'd like some that have got more distinct marks and the reason I've wet the fabric is so that that colour can spread a bit so watercolour will just carry wherever there's water it will just keep spreading And I thought we could just play around. So I might speed this up a bit because you don't need me to teach you how to put paint on fabric. One of the reasons I thought about doing this was because we are really struggling in the UK at the moment with rain. So I work in a school that is out in the, literally in the middle of nowhere and I pass lots of rural farmland on my way to work and every single field is totally waterlogged and it's a real problem it's a cause of real concern so the last six months of last year were the wettest the UK has ever known and I know if you are in a different country you'll probably be thinking that it only ever rains in the UK but it really doesn't and we are finding it quite difficult to cope with apart from the fact that it's very grey all the time we've got problematic waterlogging now so um, I thought something watery would be really appropriate because we said that we wanted to do a kind of journal of the year so I thought that something quite watery looking would be very appropriate. I'm going to let that dry but I've also got some thread. So this is just a cotton thread that is um, I think it's like a crochet cotton for dishcloths and all I've done is wound it around a Christmas card and I've tied it off with a short piece of thread at the top before I've slipped it off the card and that has given me a little skein I suppose there I haven't cut the end but I thought we could just do some of the same with the thread now I don't know whether this would be colour fast 
don't really need it to be though because I don't intend to ever wash anything that's in this book so once it's dry it should be colour fast because most of the colours that I'm using are decent quality watercolours and they tend to be colour fast. Let's spritz the thread, get that a bit damp and then I'm going to apply some colour. So don't have tons of dyes but I thought we could make some custom thread and just see how that worked. So I've got some indigo, I have actually found my indigo now, I have been using Payne's Grey. So let's get a bit of indigo in there. There we go. So I'm going to allow that to dry and now we've got some custom thread that is in the same colourways as the fabric I've just painted. Okay so here we are, I have dried off my fabric, I've used a hairdryer and I've had a bit of a play, I've got these um, watercolour brush pens and I wondered whether we could do something else. <laughs> I think I've ruined it but I'm not going to panic because we've now got this splot here and a couple of lines I just wondered what would happen and um, what happened was that the colours that have gone to make up the pigment in these pens have separated out so now I've got a purple line which I didn't plan on doing so as I added water the pigments have split into the fabric and I've now got this bizarre hard patch where I put a blob of water on to spread it out but I've now got a sort of um, turquoise pigment and a purple pigment which is obviously the two pigments that went to make up this shade of blue so it's okay because I can either cover it up with another fabric or um, it's a bigger piece anyway than I had intended to use so um, we've got a decent size piece of fabric here so what I thought was we could start with that as our background it's dried a lot paler than I thought but I really like these marks that do persist so I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit more I've already made a cut so I'm just gonna tear it and Obviously I'm not going to throw that away, it's a nice piece of fabric that I can use moving forward. So that's roughly the size of my background. So I'm going to put that on there and then I want to find some other fabrics that I can layer up and I quite like the idea of making something approximating a landscape, nothing to obviously picked all so I'm just going to roughly cut a line wavy line and I really like that raw edge so I'm going to make sure that is in my piece somewhere let's do it like that and we can have let's have another piece of tweed these are nice and small so let's I'm not going to worry too much I'm not agonizing here let's have something a little bit I don't like the spots of that, I actually prefer the back of that fabric. So let's have and just layer these up to be kind of landscapey, nothing too obvious. Just wondering where my border is. There we go, something like that. 
we want something to go along the back so I'm wondering whether this bit of binding would work because it's quite long I can get it going right across the background I wonder whether it's too dark though maybe that would be better getting a bit of contrast in would be good let's just try it out I've cut that really roughly and if I put that in the background maybe that's going to give us our contrast that'll do we're going to keep adding to this so it doesn't matter if we're not 100% happy and I think something needs to go in the middle something much darker got a nice dark section here and I'm going to fray that up a little bit more so all I'm going to do is just pull out some of the fibres if they don't want to come out um, you can just get a pin in just to hook some of the threads and that will make it easier to pull them out so I just want to fray up that edge a little bit you can then sew with those if you really want to There we go, I quite like that. That's probably a bit even for me. So let's make it a bit shallower at one end. There we go, we can make that a bit ne um, narrower at one side so that we don't have a hard regular line oh that's better yeah I like that better so I do love an imagined landscape and I do like different textures happening on a piece of textile art so this is going to let us do some interesting things with the sky and we've got a nice kind of background here that we can work with and I, I don't want to get rid of that edge, I really don't, but I don't think it shows up very well. There we go, that's a bit better, we can see that tufty edge now, maybe that needs to come in a little bit. Good, so I think we've got a, a starting point for our piece of work. So I'm just going to put some pins in. So all I've done there is try and create something like a set of hills that I can then over stitch. So I think the theme so far where I live is the weather and the way it's affecting the environment, the rain and so I quite like that sort of wet watery background and I want to create something like a Lincolnshire landscape. So Lincolnshire is mostly very flat but there's a section in Lincolnshire called the Wolds where we have very rolling sort of hills and hills is too strong a word really they it, they're undulations in the land but there's layers and layers and layers of them and you get these lovely sort of vistas because it's relatively flat where you see the rolls of hills so you get massive skies because none of the land is very high above sea level 
you get these massive skies and these rolling landscapes so I think we can have a play with that so all I'm going to do now is just use some ordinary machine cotton I've got a pale blue here this is a machine thread and I've just got a standard sewing needle I'm going to use my quilters knot which is the knot that I generally use so I put the thread over my finger wrap the thread around the needle a few times then pinch those wraps and then I'm going to pull the needle through the wrap still holding onto it and I get a knot fairly close to the edge of my fabric and all I'm going to do is just tack these down or baste if you're watching from North America I know you like to call this basting but I'm just going to put some fairly large running stitches in each of these pieces just to hold them in place and I'm not going to follow the outside necessarily of each piece I'm just looking for ways that I can stitch through as many layers as possible so you don't have to be fussy about this so I've layered up on my background and that's going to mean that when I put my stitching on my actual intuitive stitch that we're going to focus on this year I am going to get some sort of padding it's going to look kind of padded there's going to be some texture created because there's quite a lot of thickness here so we'll actually be doing a form of quilting when we start stitching I'm just going to put that pin somewhere different so this week's all about our colour scheme and our background and getting a piece established now if you want to you can remove your tacking once you've got some embroidery on there I'm not going to bother so I've picked a thread that kind of blends in you're not going to be able to see it very easily and I'm just going to leave those stitches in but if you want to remove yours you might be better off tacking or basting in a very strongly contrasting colour so like a bright pink would work on this because it's going to stand out really clearly and that will help you find your basting stitches once you've finished and then you can remove them but I'm not bothered about that I never remove basting stitches on pieces like this so they will just stay there and form part of the scene so they'll just be a really subtle addition I mean you can leave your basting stitches in in your contrasting colour if you want to okay so you get the idea I've gone all the way around the outside and then I'm just going to do a wavy line across the centre to hold those down so I'll pause here and then come back when I'm done okay I'm back I have stitched down my pieces now and I realised that I'd started a bit too high up so I've added an extra piece of like a duck egg wool fabric this is like this kind of thing that you'd make a coat out of and so that's my sort of approximation of my landscape that's my background now I did think just as a last finishing touch that the point of this is the waterlogged fields for me so I wanted to create some sense that there is water in this landscape so I fished out some organza ribbon I, I got given a massive roll I think this is like floristry ribbon got a massive roll of it and it just sits in my cupboard because I never really know what to do with it and I thought this might be great for creating some watery feelings so you can't see it particularly well but if you layer it up so I think in the foreground if I layer it up it's got that shimmery quality to it that looks a bit watery and if I layer 
if I then fold it back quite roughly, so I've got different layers lantern in different places actually I think that looks really effective so I'm going to give that a whirl now I don't want the edges to be too straight I know water does um, I wonder what happens if we rip this it's going to be too rough I think so I'm just going to slide my scissors so it's not going to be perfectly flat I know water does lie flat but I don't want the edges that overlap to be completely horizontal because otherwise we're going to lose some of the effects I think so I'm just going to slide my scissors along and just let them go where they will like this so when I, I can get a flat line but I just want them to be landing at different points so that we've got an effect that looks like light playing on the water like that so it is going to look fairly flat and maybe I don't want it all the way across actually maybe we just we need some patchy bits so maybe one layer goes all the way across so we're just making this up as we go along but then maybe I can come in in different places with different shaped pieces that stop and start actually I like that much better that's much better so we have got a sort of water level happening there but it's not too obvious I'm just going to shape this a little bit more I don't like that harsh edge that works quite well and then what I can do because I've done my tacking stitches in from the very edge of my fabric I can tuck some of this behind each layer to create a sense that there's water all the way through this scene. So if I get my the eye end of my needle, I can just tuck this underneath the edge of that wool fabric. Just tuck it in under you wouldn't need to tuck it in because you're watching the video <laughs> and so I, I'm making this up as you as I go along but you can do it in a slightly different order so you could get your organza in earlier if you wanted to I'm just sort of thinking this out as I go now I don't really want to do too much piercing of my ribbon so what I've got is a fabric glue stick that is going to help hold these in place until I start putting embroidery over the top. So that's the kind of thing I'm going to go for and just get some shimmery, watery effects into my landscape. I'm just going to get a bit of paper so that I can apply glue without getting it all over everything. So these are little, they're almost like print sticks, they go on bright yellow, it's quite alarming, but they dry clear and will wash away. So I'm just going to put some dabs of that fabric glue. I really hope they're dry clear, because <laughs> that's a horrible colour on this piece. So I'm just going to stick that down, maybe it's better actually if I put the glue on here and then I haven't got to worry so much about it. So let's put a little dab of glue coming in from there 
we will stitch over this but um, this chiffon or organza ribbon is, is quite delicate so I don't want it to be over punctured I don't often use glue if you've been around for a while you won't have seen me use glue very much but I think it might be our best friend this year be a bit of a time saver I suppose I didn't think about it but I could have just glued all this down I suppose so I'm sincerely hoping that this goes clear it did last time I used it but now I've lost confidence because I've got these massive splodges of bright yellow in the middle of my piece of stitching <laughs> we'll just wing it and see how it goes if you don't have fabric glue by the way you could just use print stick because we're we're going to over sew this so it's not like this is the only thing that's going to be holding it down and we haven't got to wash it or wear it or use it or whatever it's just a piece of art so it's either going to go in your book if you're making a book on a wall hanging if you are making a wall hanging you do you so if you don't have fabric glue any stick glue would work i think so don't worry too much about it let's so here's our finished background this is our week one piece our finished background i've just noticed i've got a really long bit there that i'm just gonna snip off i hope you've enjoyed that so we've done our watercolor background i love the way this is looking and i do think that awful <laughs> watermark is fading a little bit as it's dried out even more i think this is going to be great to be adding some stitching to and we've got a landscape that reflects where i live can't wait to see your versions and see the landscapes around you and what's happening in the world where you are so this is very much reflecting what's happening in lincolnshire and the uk currently you could either copy this and replicate some waterlogged fields or you could create a scene that reflects what's happening with the weather and the environment in the place where you live it's entirely up to you so you could do a scene like me you could do something a lot more abstract if you want to really looking forward to seeing you your uploads in the Facebook group if you want to upload on Instagram you can use hashtag FSH winging it 24 and that way we'll see all of our posts together so if you're not a fan of Facebook want to upload on Instagram that's the place for you thanks so much for joining me and for watching today and if you want something similar to this then I will put some videos over here to take you a little bit further in your stitching journey. Have a great week making your January background and I will see you next Sunday for our next video. Bye!